Yes, sir. What a day that will be. Hey, once again, I want to thank you, everybody. My birthday's not till Tuesday, but the the gifts y'all gave me and the gift cards and things like that. Well, I'm that's fantastic. I'm so um uh, blessed. I had somebody uh today bless us tremendously um uh with uh just ba- an answer to prayer, a concern, uh something I was like, dear Heavenly Father, you've got to take care of this for me. And um, it wasn't in spectacular fashion like my mom and dad prayed for um, years ago about their groceries and um, ice cream and and people knocking on their door and leaving groceries and, oh, an angel must have did it, you know. Um, But uh, people that you you, you bless me and I try to bless you, I try to show up, uh, be at the hospital, be at the the, when you're concerned and counsel and and help you bear your burdens. And and I want to do a better job. uh, I, I, I want to do a better job. Uh, people bring me questions sometimes, and I don't have all the answers, uh, but the Lord has the answers. So um, I try to get in the Bible. That's what I, I'm the pastor. I better be in the Bible. <laughs> uh, but I want to be in the Bible, and I want to learn more of it. I want to know more of it so I can share it with you. And then here's the neat thing. There's no, there's no line in the sand that says, okay, the pastor's on this side, and he he... he He's the only one that's allowed to learn and understand and know God. You're allowed to do it too. You're, and what, that's what keeps me on my toes is when somebody comes to me and says, hey, you know, I've been doing this deep study into this and I was wondering about it. I'm like, Ugh. student of the Bible, oh no. <laughs> I got to be on my toes. It makes, it makes me work hard. Like Pastor Jackson was saying yesterday about being a teacher and having these kids in their class who were their parents were professors and they were all going to universities and it was just it was just east side of Indianapolis. Doug Jackson came from the hood, came from a bad and broken life and came from a destroyed childhood and, and um, uh, God found him and fixed him and made him something. This is nobody Doug Jackson, teacher in Chico, California, teaching these kids and he had to teach himself biology and he had to teach himself literature and he had to teach himself these things to stay a student Staying a student, I um, tomorrow um, I, I head down to Texas real quick to to take some things down there in in my semi truck, and um, uh, it's loaded down and whatnot. And and uh, d- Thursday, this past Thursday was a was an incredible experience, um, having to take that big rig and and pull into a teacher's parking lot at a school in Dearborn, Michigan. I had to take that and pull into this parking lot with all these cars around me and then I had to serpentine basically back around a building and not hit it but get as close as possible so I could have as much pivot room and there's a fence over here and a concrete bunker with um, uh, uh, um, dumpsters inside of it and I had to not hit that and, and, and back around this building to a truck back there a crane truck so they could pick up the, the, the building that was on my, on my trailer and move it over. And I, it was a learning experience. And I told the guy that I was with, Mike, and I told him, um, I said, uh, you know, I watched a video some time ago about Peyton Manning and Tom Brady, two of the greatest quarterbacks to ever play the game, so to speak. And um, they were both basic, basically, they both said they became great because they stayed students. They never became, well, I know it all. As soon as you say, well, I know it all, um, if in the, from the Christian standpoint, that's a, that's a measure of pride. And if you will, um, if you will uh, uh, exalt yourself, God says, I will, ab- I will abase you. But if you'll stay a student, stay a student, stay under an authority, God says, I'll raise you up. I'll raise you up. And um, uh, there are people here that are old enough to be my parents and my grandparents even. To say, Very close to be my grandparents, I think. Uh, but um, I, I want to stay. The Bible commands me as a young man, as I said in, in Sunday school this morning, uh, Rehoboam, how he went to the elders and he went to the, his, his friends he grew up with. And they both gave him advice. And he took the advice of the young men and split the kingdom. And... Um, uh, Nothing wrong with youthful advice as long as that youthful advice is Bible-based. Um, but uh, staying under authority and staying a student, stay a student of the Bible, stay a student of prayer. Ne- uh, never come to a place in your life where you think that you know it all and y- you've become an equal with your mentor. 
um, revere them, give honor to whom honor is due and all that. But um, I, I, wanna, I wanna be a big help. So all that from saying, y'all were a blessing to me today and the, the, the gift cards and um, the, uh, the groceries and um, everything in between. Uh, there are people in this room I could just begin to talk and talk and say about how much of a blessing they've been, but um, I don't want to think that I've earned it. Um, well, you earned it. No, I, it's not about earning it. It's, it's, it's family, and I hope that you see me as spiritual family, and when there's a need, you'll help meet it, and when you have a need, I'll do my best to help meet it. And uh, y'all have been really good to me, and I hope that uh, as long as the Lord tarries in heaven and doesn't come back and get us, that I can grow as a pastor and as a friend and as a leader and um, uh, take us to new heights. Amen. Uh, what I want you to do is we are in Romans 13 this morning. I want to go to Romans chapter 12 this evening. Romans chapter 12. Romans 12. Now, this is a verse that I've been uh, thinking on, and I want to share a message with you tonight. Um, uh, uh, on the on the subject of um, uh, of this 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 verse, and I hope that you'll you'll read it and you'll kind of snicker along with me, and you'll kind of be intrigued of the scripture verse, and you'll want to uh, grasp it, and not only grasp it, not only hear it, but to act it, to to try to perform it. Uh, let's pray, and we'll read. The, the scripture verse. Heavenly Father, I thank you this evening uh, for uh, the folks that are here. Uh, Lord, I'm thankful for soul winners and nursery workers and ushers. I'm thankful for uh, Miss Sarah who makes up the bulletin. And I'm thankful for Brother Dan who makes sure that the building is secure during the service. And uh, Lord, people come in aching. They come in uh, body aching and heart aching. Uh, Heavenly Father, you see it. I'd ask that you'd bless them. I'd ask that you would uh, uh, give us strength. Heavenly Father, help our church as we move forward in these times and these days, uh, these days where people say the end is near, when we really don't know if it is or not, all the signs of the times. Uh, Lord, help us just to be found faithful, not stagnant, not apathetic, but taking action according to thy word and thy command as we've been commissioned. We ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Verse number um, uh, 18, I just want to read one verse to you. The Bible says, if it be possible, if it be possible, as much as lieth in you, live peaceably with all men. I'll read it one more time. The Bible says, if it be possible, as much as lieth in you, live peaceably with all men. Now, I want you to take notice. It says, if it be possible. You ever come up, you ever have a, a, an interaction with somewhere it's not possible to be peaceful where you just they, they give you a headache and there's confrontation and I'm not saying it goes to fisticuffs I'm not saying you, you punch him in the nose but there's aggravation there's there's argument there's heated discussion it says if it be possible now if it be possible implies that it might not always be possible if it be possible it implies that it may not always be possible to live peaceably with all men. But then notice it says, as much as lieth in you, as much as lieth in you. And I want to concentrate on that tonight. Uh, now, get this. Is I, this is almost an echo of what I spoke on this morning about um, having things in order and things of importance. Some things are not as important as others. Get this. Not, um, not everything deserves the same amount of energy, concentration, um, uh, care, uh, uh, investment. Things, some things just don't matter as much as others. Now, I like football. Football is um, uh, it's a seasonal joy. Uh, I like football. I like the competition. I've always been competitive. But football, I love football. Now, I play basketball, but football is, um, it just has another element to it. I, I just like football a lot, like watching it, uh, playing it if I'm able video games even. I, I, I love football. Um, but football came on today, and uh, we had choir practice. I enjoyed choir practice. Amen. Football was on today, and folks were talking, and we got to talking in the back, and uh, man, I love that. I like it when people hang around after church and talk and fellowship. 
because we've been through now winter time's different. Everybody comes and we have church, but it's winter time. You know what everybody does? We split. <laughs> Grab some hot chocolate on the way home or something. But we get out of here. But I like the fellowship. I like people talking. I like that. That matters more than football. Talking to my brothers and sisters in Christ about the, the, uh, the projects and ministries and different things that we can do around here and, and ideas and thoughts and uh, planning and, and doing different things and just talking, just talking. It's better to talk football with a brother in Christ after church than it is to go and leave the brethren and go watch football. Now, I like football. I'm going to watch football tonight. I'm going to watch the Bears beat the Packers. Uh, but um, take that, Pip. You're watching. You and Miss Pip. I know she's, she's a Cowboys fan. Forgive her for that. But um, uh, it says, as much as lieth in you. As much as lieth in you. Now, folks, I can't justify giving so much of my heart to basketball and so much of my heart to football and lifting weights and um, uh, uh, playing golf and uh, uh, whatever, and playing chess with my dad or, or my mom um, or, or whatever my hobby may, de- may be. I cannot justify putting so much effort into that and so much investment into that, more so than I do about soul winning and knocking on doors and reading my Bible and praying and pleasing Christ. That has to take priority. The Bible says, but seek ye first. Thank you, Francisco. But seek ye. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added. Did you know God knows that you like building boats? Anybody here like to build boats? You like to build boats? Wow. Anybody here collect stamps, cards? Bill, you collect cards. He's a card collector. Uh, he's... Do not disturb. Uh, uh, he, he's a, he, he likes that stuff. He loves those kinds of things. Uh, but but um, uh, uh, whatever it may be, you know, God knows that you like picking flowers. He knows that you like interior design. God knows that you like art. God knows that you like these things. But if you say, okay, I love art. I love sports. I love making money. I love working a deal. I love whatever it may be. But you say to that thing, hey, you take, the, you take the passenger seat because God first. God first. God knows that whatever career it is that you want to be. God knows that. God's not trying to rob you of the joy of this life. God's not trying to take away, but he's saying, put me first, and I'll give you a life that you could not even imagine. And I'm not talking prosperity gospel where you're um, a Scrooge McDuck jumping into your tower of gold. That's not what I'm saying. But it's, I'm talking about peace and, and, and stability and confidence. Great peace have they which love thy law, and nothing shall offend them. The Bible says that a good name is rather to be chosen than great riches and loving favor rather than silver and gold. You see... You can have a billion dollars and lay your head on your pillow at night and toss and turn and worry about the company and worry about the lawsuits and worry about the, um, the recalls on parts of, that, of things that you've distributed. You can be Elon Musk. You can be Jeff Bezos. It doesn't mean that you don't have any problems. It doesn't mean that. But the, and the Bible teaches that. It's better to be broke And have the Lord Jesus Christ in the house with peace and love and confidence and encouragement than it is to be rich and have drama. Drama, 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 drama. God is not the author of confusion. God is peace. I love that verse. I claim it all the time. Great peace have they. And I put my name in there. Great peace has Jake Jackson because he loves God's law. Great peace have they which love thy law, and nothing shall offend them. Nothing shall offend them. That means trials will not offend me. Temptation will not offend me. Testing will not offend me. I don't want to get all hot and bothered all the time because um, uh, uh, and and get hot under the collar and get angry at God and feel uncomfortable because God's not hearing my prayers. Yes, he is. I know they're standing on the promises. I know that God knows my name. I know that God loves me. I know that God cares for me. The Bible says, 1 Peter 5, 7, casting all your care upon him. Why? Because he cares for you. Amen. He cares for you. Even Francisco, he cares for Francisco. He loves, he cares for you. Jim, I don't, he, God cares for you. He does, he cares for you. And we may not feel it. We may not 
feel all warm and cozy and say, I know God cares for me. But I said, like John said in the book of Revelation, he was in the spirit on the Lord's day. Now get this, the Holy Spirit of God is inside of me as salvation. He's in me. I have him. He is the seal of my redemption. However, however, I've got to get in the spirit. I've got, it's really difficult for me to be like super Christian driving down the road in my semi-truck. God does not expect you to, um, uh, I don't know, be super Christian while you're shaving. You have to shave. It's kind of difficult when you're taking care of business in the bathroom, whether it's shower or whatever it may be, as God has designed us, and be filled with the Holy Spirit of God. No, but it's an actual, it's an action of getting in the Spirit. From Friday to Saturday is transition time. It doesn't mean I'm a fake. It doesn't mean I'm a hypocrite. It doesn't mean I'm a two-fold, uh, uh, a two-faced, double-minded man. It means that I have a family. It means that I have these goals. It means that I have a job. It means that I have all these responsibilities of things that I'm supposed to be doing, and I'm trying to do it in a biblical way. Uh, 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 Joshua said, um, as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. I can be a father. I can be a husband. I can be an employee. I can be a truck driver. I can be a son. I can be a friend, and I can be the uh, uh, be all those things in a Christian manner, in a right kind of manner. But for me to change gears and get in the spirit, man, I filled myself up with singing, gospel songs. Hey, I'm not going to hell. Hallelujah to the lamb. He's still on the throne. Blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. The old rugged cross, filling myself up with songs and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and praising God and making melody in my heart. That helps me get in the spirit. When I get down on my knees and I pray somewhere at the altar, I lay prostrate here and I pray and I ask God for power and love and wisdom. What am I doing? I'm getting in the spirit, getting in the spirit. And I want to get in the spirit. And I can't do this verse right here outside of a consciously putting God first. As much as lieth in me, as much as lieth in me, I've got to put God first. The Bible says, as much as lieth in you, there are some things that deserve your best attention. There are some things that deserve your best attention. And I want to give you a couple of these things tonight. And I want to help you on to, to, to um, nudge you or encourage you to do them with all your might. The Bible says, whatsoever thy hand findeth to do, do it with thy might. It also says, whatever you find, whatsoever you do, do it as unto the Lord. As unto the Lord. You're like, how do I do that? It's a, just thinking about it. If I were to clean this auditorium, I want to do it like I'm doing it for the Lord. Amen. Could you imagine the amount of elbow grease we'd put in it if we did that? Wow. Say, I want to lead my family. We can lead it consciously saying, I want to lead my family like I'm doing it for the Lord. You know, you can do your finances with God in mind. You know, you can be a good employee, a good husband, a father, a mother, a sister, a brother, a son, a daughter like you're doing it for the Lord. No, I ran across that verse the other day uh, where it says, uh, wives, submit yourselves to your husbands. I'm not a wife, thank goodness. But I thought, I was thinking about that, and I was like, how can Jamie submit herself to me? The best way that she can submit herself to me is if she, in her mind, says, I'm doing it as to the Lord. I'm submitting to my husband because I'm doing it for the Lord. And I want to please the Lord. It ain't about that dope that I'm trying to serve. That's what she says about me. No, uh, uh, but it's for the Lord. It's for the Lord. Now, it says, if it be possible, as much as lieth in you, live peaceably with all men. So number one, as much as lieth in you, live peaceably with all men. Now, folks, that's not easy. That's not an easy task to live peaceably with all men. Uh, but we should make an effort. Make an effort to make that a priority in our life. Now, I'm not trying to throw any of my family members under the bus, but I come from a long line of quick-tempered, hot-tempered, raging maniacs <laughs> who are uh, short-tempered, short-fused, and um, they will jump out of the car and beat your head in within a moment's notice, and I come from that line. Uh, but somewhere along the line, 
when I was a kid and I knew I had a temper and my mom can testify to it and maybe my, my siblings and uh, even through my teenage years, I had, um, not, I wouldn't say an uncontrollable temper, but I had a, I had a temper. Um, and it was ungodly. And somewhere along the line, God helped me. Uh, because did you know a temper can put you in prison? Did you know a temper can make you live with regret for the rest of your life? Did you know a temper can make you say things that you regret? The Bible says that the tongue is an unruly evil. Who, who can tame it? Who can tame the tongue is an incredible individual. Uh, but I come from that, and, and um, uh, uh, just violence, a long line of violence. And now, and listen, I'm, this isn't any sort of pat on my back. This isn't, but I, 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 I want to express my, how God has helped me. And sure enough, I'm going to say it and it's going to be tested. But God has given me a longer fuse. God has, I, the last thing I want to do is, is, is hit somebody. I don't want to hurt anybody. I don't want to punch somebody in the face. I don't want to choke somebody out. I don't want to slam anybody on the ground. I don't want to do that. Uh, but I, this is how I feel. It's better to be capable of doing that and not doing it than it is to, than it is for that to be needed and not be capable of doing it. You see, good men, righteous men, faithful men, godly men should be capable and I'm not saying everybody's got to be, um, uh, you know, Bruce Lee. But men ought to be capable of a push, a shove, a punch, a kick, a poke in the eye. Uh, why? Well, to defend our families, to defend our church. Just, we have had folks come in here before who wanted to start something. And bless God, we've had men stand up and say, not today. We will physically grab you and take you out of here. But the last thing I want to do is hurt anybody. And the last, no, the last, the second to last thing I, I want to do is hurt anybody. I don't want to get in a fight in traffic. I don't want to fight anybody. I'm like, Mr. Chill. I like being chill. I like making friends. And, and I'll let things go. But really the last thing I want to do is fight with my brethren. I don't want to fight with my brothers and sisters in Christ. I want to abstain from fighting. Did you know it takes two to have a fight? Do you know that? It takes two to, now, I remember some guys coming here, and I'm like, hey, what happened to your arrest? They're like, I punched a concrete wall, and I lost. Yeah, you lost, sucker. That, that doesn't give much. Uh, but it takes two to have, a real, uh, to have a fight. Now, realize that some people just want to argue. The Bible speaks about froward people, people that are just hard to get along with, people that are just difficult to get with, to understand. The Bible says stay away from them. R distance yourself from them. Realize that some people just expect to be attacked or mistreated. They, they have the victim mentality. When you go to confront someone, and I don't mean in a mean type of way, but you go to address a situation with someone and they play the victim. Oh, the pastor. Oh, the, the pastor's wife. Or, oh, Miss Hillary attacked me about the nurse. No, she didn't. Be well, Miss Hillary, I could believe. No, uh, uh, yeah, right. Um, uh, Miss Hillary said, here's the boxing glove sucker. The Bible, what does the Bible say? A soft answer turneth away wrath, but grievous words stir up anger. We were playing basketball one time with the school basketball team. We were practicing before a game, and a man and his son kept getting onto the court, and his son was getting into the way, just a little kid. And uh, my brother Ben wanted to physically encourage them to leave. There we go. And I could see that it was happening, and Ben was the coach, and I got up, and I was like, Ben, 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 I'll take care of it. You go back down, I'll take care of it. And I went to the guy and I said, hey, listen, this is the situation. Now, you know what he could have done? Ah, back at me. Soft answer. Ah, and now there comes a time where I feel physically threatened that I'll call Jamie and she'll come take care of business for me. Uh, but I, uh, she's not even in here. Uh, uh, but but a soft, you know what they did? He got it. He understood. He got the message and got out of the way. Why? Because a soft answer turns away wrath. Er, that's what uh, I was in a truck and um, we pulled out in front of some people and we were in the wrong and they got over in the other lane and flipped us off and honked their horn and I leaned out the window and I said hey we're so I'm sorry we shouldn't have done that uh, 
They didn't know what to do. We were backing up, Doug Molinex and I were backing up a, a trailer full of sand, and this lady wouldn't give us the room, and she was cussing at us and saying all kinds of things, and whoa, I flung my door open, and by the time I flung my door open and put my foot on the ground, I went from, I'm going to kill this woman, not literally, um, I am going to be mean to this woman, to watch this. And I went to her, and I looked at her, and her window was down, and she looked at me, blank, 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 white boy, and I looked at her, and I said, ma'am, you need Jesus. <laughs> she looked at me like, like, I, like I physically assaulted her. She said, her eyes, it all changed. Ma'am, you need Jesus. God bless you and have a good day. Can, can we get some room to back up? This thing's hard to, you know what she did? She backed up so we had room to get out. The Bible, folks, the Bible, if you'll take, not hear it, we sit there and go for, um, let's see, we, let's say you come to church three times a week. You're there Sunday morning for an hour. Let's say you come at Sunday school, so you're there for two and a half hours. Let's say you come to Sunday night church, so you're there for uh, uh, an hour, and then uh, you come on Wednesdays, and you're there for an hour. So you get two and a half, three and a half, four and a half hours of preaching and teaching and fellowship per week. How much of that do you hear? Besides, I turn the oven off as you sit there and daydream and wonder and how much of this are you actually soaking in? And then, excuse me, how much of it are you doing? Be ye doers of the word and not hearers only, deceiving your own selves. This is the Bible in action. I don't want to fight. So what's the best way not to fight? A soft answer. You remember a couple of weeks ago, my dad and I kind of got into it in the back of the auditorium? How many of y'all saw that? Anybody see that? We kind of got into it. He was mad, acting like a big baby. You're like, oh, yeah, I said it. My dad was acting like a baby. My mom says, amen. Uh, my dad was acting like a baby. And, and, um, uh, and he was right to, on, on a level. And we went outside. I said, come on, let's go outside. When you say let's go outside to another man, that means like, let's fight. I didn't mean it that way. I meant like, let's go outside so, you know, Let's be discreet here. This is, this is not good. So we went outside, and he, he's like the Tas, you know who the Tasmanian devil is? <laughs> and I looked at him in his eyes, and he's mad. And I said, Dad, I'm sorry. I was wrong. It's like he got hit with the Holy Ghost. He's, he's, and you know what? He went, ah, that's the Bible. That's the Bible. A soft answer turneth away wrath. And, and, and I don't want to fight with people. So how's the best way not to fight with people? A soft answer turneth away wrath. Humility. Well, I'm right. Swallow your pride for the sake of unity, for the sake of the brethren. And I'm not saying steer away from an argument and steer away from a fight. If there's um, a, a doctrinal position, if a wolf comes in here and starts, starts trying to get into the ears of, of, of young people and, and, and of the sheep and start uh, uh, deceiving them and he's heresy and, and apostasy, man, we'll cast you out on your head, amen, on your blessed assurance, and you're out of here. Get out. Now, there are some things to be violent against, but not against the brethren. That's the devil's work. A soft answer turns away wrath. How, how do I live peaceably with all men? Abstain from fighting. How do I live peaceably with all men? Avoid foolish questions, the Bible says. We know that lost people, they ask foolish questions like, where did God come from? Um, the Bible says, in the beginning. In the beginning. Um, I don't know where God came from. You say, well, that's not logical. And since it's not logical and I can't make sense of it, I don't believe it. Okay, fine. Go your way. I'm going to believe what I believe. But the Bible says without faith, it is impossible. Without faith, it is impossible. You have to have faith. You have to have faith. And I know people want to argue that away and I don't really care. Go, go do what you do and you die and go where you go and I'll die and go where I go and we'll see how it all turns out. But I'm going to believe the Bible. They ask questions like, um, uh, um, how did all the animals get on the ark? We know lost people ask these questions. They don't understand. The Bible says that the natural man receiveth not the things of God. A lost man can't understand the Bible in its fullness because it's blocked. There is a spiritual wall. 
that, the, that God has blocked. You can't get in there. But saved people, do you know saved people ask foolish questions too? Like this right here. Come here, Luke. Here's a foolish question. Hey. Well, I want to make sure everybody can hear. Hey, hey, Brother Luke. And we're standing in the hallway or the back of the auditorium. And we'll say, hey, did you hear what Brother Kevin did? That's a foolish question. Lucas comes to me, and I say that to Luke, and he says, no, and I don't care. It's none of my business. You know what most Christians, this baby Christians and we Christians say, no, what did he do? What happened? And what we do is we act sincere, and we act concerned. We say, oh, we should pray for Brother Kevin. And then Lucas goes, and Lucas goes to, to, uh, to um, uh, Brother Hoffman here. He says, Brother Hoffman, you know, it's, there's a church member, and I won't name any names, but he leads the singing. <laughs> and he says, you know, he's fallen into sin. He's wearing a Packers t-shirt with Brother Pip. No, he's, um, he, he's done something wrong, or he's done, and he goes and, and says, Brother Hoffman, would you please pray for Brother Kevin as he does. And Brother Hoffman goes, wow, wow. Mm -hmm. uh, Dr. Pohasi, did you hear? <laughs> Foolish questions. Did you hear about so-and-so? Did you hear about what Miss Addie Jackson did? Did you hear that? She said a curse word. No, I don't know if she did or not. You're like, Brother Jake, be quiet. You're pointing things out. No, um, uh, but uh, did you hear what Sister So-and-so said about you? And our res Christian's response should be, you know what? No, I didn't hear, but let's pray for them. The best way to turn down a foolish question is with a righteous answer. Did you hear about so-and-so? All right, gossip, uh, gossip partner, you can go. Thank you for being an ear for me to lean on. Oh, I, I heard that you were, I heard that Brother Kevin was a great guy. That's what I heard. Um, I heard that he did 73 in a 70. <laughs> That was Miss Kathy. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Uh, I, I heard that he said, you dummy, what are you doing? As somebody cut him off in traffic. <laughs> um, or here, have, here, yeah, here's guilty, guilty. You know, uh, here's one, and I, from a pastor's perspective, a pastor is sometimes conscious about, should I wear that? Is that too nice? Should I drive that? Is that, is that too nice of a vehicle? I don't want to feel like I'm, living above the people. I don't want to feel, I am of the people. I don't want to feel like I'm better than them. I don't, you know, church members are struggling going through it and they're having a hard time tithing and here I am driving it. I'm not, but driving a Mercedes Benz, you know, and that's on my dime. I mean, I, if I'm working a job, I'm, um, what do they call that? A, 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 a bivocational, I'm bi. I'm bivocational, <laughs> a bivocational pastor um, and, and I'm working a job and I'm paying my own bills and I can afford to do it. However, it's optics. Do I want to give people, weak members or forward members in the church, an opportunity to say ought against the pastor? As a pastor, I say, yeah, whatever, hang them. But at the same time, I don't want to be a stumbling block, as Paul said. I don't want to cause my brother to fall. So Christians ask foolish questions too. So how do we live, how do we live peaceably with all men? Number one, abstain from fighting. Number two, avoid foolish questions. Number three, ask forgiveness for your enemies. <gasps> what? My enemies? Ask forgiveness for my enemies? Now, folks, now it's a lot easier to say than do, right? Isn't it easy to talk about being a Christian? It sure is. It's so easy to sit back and talk about soul winning. It's so easy to sit back and talk about the bus ministry. It's so easy to sit back and talk about Oh, how I love Jesus. Oh, how I love Jesus. And Jesus said, love your enemies. And we say, oh, it's a whole lot more difficult to be a Christian than to talk about it. Easier to say than do. Uh, there, we have a little weight room upstairs and we put like, I can't remember what, we put like 405 on there. I'm like, I can do that. I can, that's a deadlift I can do. And I didn't, I got like 395 or something. And uh, uh, I was like, I can do that. I want to do that. And brother Dan, brother, brother Dan, how much did you do? 
390? Or was it? Oh, it was 90. It was, <laughs> it, it was up there. It was up there. But you look at those weights, and as a guy in a, a man's bravado, you look at that, and, and I'm a younger guy. Uh, the older guys look at that and go, what's the point? <laughs> older guys are like, I, I'm smart enough to know that not only can, I can't lift it, but I don't want to lift it. Um, and one day, I'll, I'll get to that level. But as a young guy, and I'm still relatively young, um, uh, uh, I look at that and at my bravado and my ego, and I'm like, yeah, I can get that. And then you bend over to get it, and you get your stance, and you get your rear end down, and your chest up, and your head up, and your shoulders back, and you go to uh, pull it off the ground, and you can't pull it off the ground. <laughs> Why? Because it's easier to say than do. Yeah. Just as it is with forgiveness. You know, Jesus prayed for his enemies I think Jesus spent time praying for Judas. I think Jesus spent time praying for those Roman soldiers who would eventually beat him and bruise him and scar him and nail him to a tree. I think Jesus prayed for the Pharisees and the Sadducees. Even though he rebuked them many times, I think he still prayed for them. You know, there's nothing wrong with rebuking the enemy and standing for right. But in your quiet time, pray for your enemies. I think the greatest assault... The greatest assault that we could have before the voting booth is to find the prayer closet and to pray. There are people actively destroying our nation. It's been being destroyed. It has been, be, it is actively being destroyed for, ye, for decades now. Through the home, through divorce, through um, uh, uh, edu the education system, um, just bits and pieces, professors at colleges speaking anti-parent, anti anti-home, anti-God, anti-America, pro-fascism, pro-socialism, pro-communism, down with America, down with the republic, and it's been happening for years. The greatest assault isn't for you to arm yourself with a with a, 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 a with an ar with a, a a fire a firearm. The greatest assault for the Christian is not to arm themselves with with carnal weapons, but the greatest assault a Christian to have is arm themselves with the sword of the spirit and the helmet of salvation and the breastplate of righteousness and the loins girt about with truth and the feet uh, and the sh uh, uh, um, uh, righteousness truth. In Ephesians chapter 6, the whole armor of God. I'm losing my mind here. But the greatest assault, of course, is the voting booth. If everybody would get out and vote, get out and vote. But you say, man, they're all the same. No, they're not. I think they're all corrupt, but some are just more corrupt than others. Some of them have done deals. Listen, you have to pick the lesser evil. You say, well, I'm a born-again Christian. I don't pick the lesser evil. For my, as an American, I do. As an American, I do. But as a Christian, when God places someone in power, hey, folks, God knows Joe Biden's in power. And he knows that uh, Kalama, Kalama Harris, uh, as one of the kids would say, Camel Harris, but Kalama Harris, is it Kalama? Kamala. Kamala Harris. Kamala Harris is vice president, and, and drunk Nancy Pelosi is um, a speaker of the House, and Schumer and all these guys, and by the way, just because they got an R, and I've said this many times, just because they got R next to their name doesn't mean that they're righteous and holy and perfect and upstanding great people. And some of them take deals under the table. Some of them are, uh, they say, they, man, they get on TV and they play the game, and when you're off camera, they're behind somewhere, they're in an office somewhere, sharing cigars and scotch together, and talking about family vacations and taking your tax dollars and spending it on their lucrative lifestyles. But bless God, God knows that they're in power and it is up to us, whether we're for them or against them, to pray for them. I was deeply convicted as a Christian when Barack Obama was president. I did not pray for that man. I was wrong. I was wrong. Now, you say... I mean, Joe Biden's the president, and I don't agree. I don't agree with that guy. I think that guy's a stinking clown. Look, folks, I'm not asking you to pray for his health and safety and wellness and prosperity. I don't want that dude to prosper. But the Bible says that the heart of the king is in the Lord's hand, and as rivers of water, he turneth it whithersoever he will. Did you know God knows who Joe Biden is, and God can control Joe Biden's heart, and God can open Joe Biden's heart and open that guy's mind just as he did Pharaoh's heart? Did you know that? 
The same God that's in the Old Testament is the same God that was in the that is in the New Testament is the same God that lives and dwells and sits on the throne of Almighty Heaven and He's looking down on the man on mankind and He's looking at the heart of mankind and I think God wants to see a Daniel tonight. God wants to see somebody open up his windows and pray three times a day and say, "Dear God in Heaven, help our country." And dear God in Heaven, get a hold of the, of, of Joe Biden's heart and control it. Get a hold of Donald Trump's heart and control it. Almighty God, get a hold of him and control. Control them. Oh God, help our country. Oh God, help our people. Oh God, do something. You know, God can do it. God wants to do it. God's looking for righteous people, but we can't do it if we're not praying for our enemies. Jesus commanded it. You know, Stephen prayed for his enemies even while he was being stoned, being actively stoned. And he said, Oh God, lay not this sin to their charge as they were throwing rocks. Jesus expects us to pray for them and to do good to them. The Bible says, render not evil for evil. Now, it's not easy, folks. It's work. And the Bible says, as much as lieth in you. Where there's not a whole lot that lies in me. But the more you do, the more you produce. You know, they say that you have to to give energy to get energy. You have to exert energy to be able to put more into the tank, charging your batteries. And you know, the more that you forgive, uh, my dad preached, uh, forgiveness is just not like some one-time decision. Forgive and then keep on forgiving. Keep on forgiving. Keep on forgiving. But the Bible says we're supposed to pray for them. Number one, as much as lieth in you, live peaceably with all men. All the sub points that I gave you, pray for your enemies. Avoid foolish questions. Uh, abstain from fighting. And point number two, I'll give this to you and, and, and uh, give me six minutes and we'll close. As much as lieth in you, as much as lieth in you, lean wholly on the Lord or completely on the Lord. The Bible says in Proverbs, if you know it, I want you to, I want you to quote it with me. Proverbs chapter three, verse five and six says, trust in the Lord with all thine heart and lean not unto thine own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him and he shall direct thy paths. That's a promise. Standing on the promises, I don't know what they are. And when the testings and trials come, I fall apart. Flailing and crying and losing hope because I don't know the promises. That right there is a promise. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart. Lean not unto thine own understanding. In all, in all, in all thy ways acknowledge him. In all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy paths. Sometimes I feel like I get on God's nerves. God, should I take this job? Listen, this job that I just took, it happened so fast. I mean, it was like boom, 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 boom. I mean, we, I went in one day just to, just to like see what it was all about and it turned into an interview. Sit down, what are you about? Tell me about yourself, tell me about your family. Tell me about your, give me your history. I'm not, oh, I did not expect this today. You know what, here's an application, fill this out, bring back, I had it in the next day. And they said, okay, um, we want you to come in, we need to go do drug tests and go, which, um, you know, anyway. Uh, so I had to go do all these things and man, it happened so fast, so fast, why? Because I'm all, all the, all, everything that's going on in my life right now is because it's been directed by the Lord. And that puts me at peace. When you are doing what you believe the Lord wants you to do, according to the Bible, get that. According to the Bible, not, well, this is what I feel the Lord wants me to do. If you can't back it up with Bible, you're probably wrong. If you don't have chapter and verses and, 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 and principles why you're doing what you believe the Lord wants you to be doing, then you're probably wrong, way off base somewhere. Um, uh, but the Bible says, trust in the Lord. Trust in the Lord. What do you trust him for? I trust him for deliverance. He's, the Bible says that he's delivered me from hell. He's delivered me from hell. The Bible says that he can deliver me from habits, which we call strongholds, but mighty through God, the pulling down of strongholds. You say, mighty through God? How do I get God? The Bible says that in the beginning, John chapter one, verse one, in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God and the word was made flesh and dwelt among us. This right here is the presence of God beside his Holy Spirit inside of us. This is how he speaks to us. Say, Brother Jake, you're so loud. Can you calm down? 
Yes, I will calm down right now. I'm bringing down a couple of notches. This right here, it's just, it's emphatic. It's important. It's necessary to live the Christian life. Trust in the Lord with all our great peace have they, great peace have they, great peace have they, which love thy law and nothing, absolutely nothing shall offend them. Why? Because in all my ways I acknowledged him and he has led me to this church. In all my ways acknowledge him and he's led me to my spouse. Uh, in all my ways acknowledge him and he teaches me how to raise my kids. In all my ways acknowledge him and he helps me with my finances. In all my ways acknowledge him and he's helped me with my health. In all my ways Ways acknowledge in all my ways acknowledge and he yes he yes he shall direct my paths that's a promise that's a promise trust him for deliverance trust him for direction direction yes direction during my problems direction dealing with people miss hillary direction dealing with all those different kids at school in all your ways acknowledge him and he shall direct your paths dealing with people Finding and choosing a spouse, choosing a job or career, asking God for a good church for you to get planted in, choosing a place to live. Now, that's all important stuff. Would God have me live on the north side? Would God have me live on the south side, the west side, the east side? Where would God have me live? You say, oh, God doesn't care about that. Sure he does. Because God can give me a better place. God can give me, how do I know that if God, does, if God wants me not on the north side, but he wants me on the west side because I'm going to find a house that's right in between two neighbors who are looking for a church and looking for a pastor who are good, solid, uh, 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 heart of the earth type of people that need saved. But if I went and said, well, I want my way, I'm going to live on the north side. I'm going to go live secluded out in the middle. Of, I'm going to go somewhere out in the woods and build a place in the woods and be away from people. If that's not God's will, then I don't want to do it. Moses said, Lord, if you don't go with me, I don't want to go. So folks, I don't want to go live in a house that God's not in. I don't want to be in a marriage that God's not in. I don't want to be in a, a relationship that God's not in. I don't want to have a career that God's not in. Lucas, if you want to be a Navy SEAL, you better hang that thing up if God's not in it. Houston, if you want to be a businessman or a contractor or an assistant pastor one day, listen, bless God, don't you be an assistant pastor if God's not in it. Don't you dare be something that God's not in. Don't do it. I'm telling you right now, don't do it. Say what Moses said. Lord, if you're not going with me, I don't want to go. I can tell you right now, God's not going with you to Belmont Beverage. God's not going with you to the cannabis store. God's not going with you to the pornography store. God's not going with you to the movie theater. God's not going with you to the uh, to Hollywood. God's not going with you to the places of perversion and evil and darkness and wickedness and sinfulness. God's not going with you there. Well, I got God. Well, God's in the back. God stayed outside. And the Holy Spirit's blushing. Don't you do something that God doesn't want you to do. You say, well, it, sometimes it leaves me out in the wilderness, and I just don't feel like God is there. God said, I'll never leave you, never forsake you. That's a promise. That's a promise. So when you feel hopeless, he's there. God will deliver. God will give direction. Dealing with people, all these things where you want to go, and all these, well, it's my life. No, you Don't you know you've been bought with a price? The Bible says you've been bought with a price. You are mine. Therefore, glorify God in your body. Glorify God in your members. David said, I will set no wicked thing before my eyes. I'm not going to look upon wickedness. I hate them that hate thee, God. I will set no wicked thing before my eyes. We sing that, oh, be careful, little hands, what you hold. Oh, be careful, little hands, what you hold. For the Father up above is looking down in love. Oh, be careful, little hands, what you hold. Hold or touch or do. Oh, be careful, little mouth, what you say. Oh, be careful, little eyes, what you see. Oh, be careful, little ears, what you hear, and little feet, where you go, and mind what you think. Why? Because know you not, you've been bought with a price. Therefore, glorify God in your members. If you'll give your life to God, he'll take it. He'll hold it. He'll place it in places that you never thought you would go. But I'll tell you what, he'll give you Satisfaction. Satisfaction. Trust him for deliverance and direction. And lastly, trust him for provision. Provision. But seek ye first the kingdom of God. Matthew chapter 6, but seek ye, verse 19 through 34. But seek ye first the kingdom of God. This is verse 33. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all these things, food, clothing, shelter, peace, strength, confidence, career, spouse, children, health, finances, stability, 
material, fruit, and all these things shall be added unto you. But seek ye first. Folks, as much as lieth in you, live peaceably with all men. If it lies within you, live peaceably with all men. How can you live peaceably with men who just seem to be at war with everything in the world that's going on? Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. Be the light that shines. Don't hide it under a bushel. Let everybody see it. Let everybody see it. Don't be ashamed, for I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. Don't be ashamed of it. You know, and when we do these things, as much as lieth in you, lean entirely on the Lord. As much as lieth in you, live peaceably with all men. Folks, we can do it. You can do it. And God will bless you for it. God will bless you for it. One day you'll stand before the Lord. And we just sang, um, what a day that will be. Amen. For some, for some it'll be, man, what a day that will be when my Jesus I shall see. And some will be like, uh-oh, oh no. No, 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 Lord, I, 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 I was gonna get right next Sunday. Oh, heavenly father, oh, you know what? Six, seven, eight, nine, I've been nine minutes. Can you stand before the Lord with confidence? Yes, you can. Obey that book. Would you bow your head and close your eyes? Maybe some folks are finding it, folks, are you finding it difficult? You can sit down, I didn't ask you to stand yet. Are you finding it difficult to work for your employer? Are you finding it difficult to live with your spouse? Are you finding it difficult to raise your kids? Kids, are you finding it difficult to live with your parents? Are you finding it difficult to live in a country with inept government and authorities? Are you finding it difficult to just get along with people in general? You have the coffee mug that says, I don't do, I don't, you know, I don't, it's too early to deal with people. Are you just a big grump all the time toward people? Well, folks, that's not right. That's anti-scripture, that's anti-Jesus, that's anti-God. Mankind is the highest creation of God. We were made in his image. And he loves us so much that he gave Jesus. Let's ask God for a burden for others. And if we have a burden for others, you'll find it possible to live peaceably with all men. And you'll find more and more and more of it being possible. Because the more you become like Jesus, the more you begin to love others and have an effect on others, an impact on others. And that's what counts. That's what counts for eternity. Um, I'm going to have Miss Jennifer begin to play soft and slow. And she's just going to play a few verses. I want you to come forward. I want you to come forward if you're able. Stand up. Stand up if you're able. Stay seated where you are and make a, uh, a, uh, uh, an altar where you are, but you need to come forward. You think, man, there's somebody that's difficult in my life. There's some, I'm telling you, if you'll obey the Bible, if you'll get into the Bible, begin to obey it, you'll begin to see big changes in your life. It's not just some, we didn't just fill an hour and 10 minutes for the, for the fun of it. This is truth, thy word is truth. If you'll obey it, you'll see God at work in your life. She's just going to play through a few verses. You do business with the Lord. Hey, man, brothers. Brothers can get along. If you find it hard to live peaceably with men, you can get along. It is God's will that we get along.
you can remain standing. I want to take a moment to say um, thank you for being here again tonight. Good crowd this morning, uh, so to speak. We're missing some folks. Some folks, some folks are out of town. Some folks not feeling well, uh, like the uh, or like uh, Crystal, uh, Ernesto and Crystal clan. Their entire <laughs> amen. Uh, uh, Mrs. Pip, uh, I believe uh, who uh, she. I think she's at home now. Um, and Brother Pip staying with her to, to help her. And um, but um, uh, folks, just to continue to be in prayer for and. Um, some days are full days, some days are less days, but we're going to meet nonetheless. So I'm thankful that everybody's here. And then um, I want to recognize, you don't, we don't have to, you don't have to stand up and give us this testimony or anything. But um, my dad, Doug Jackson, and brother Alex went out knocking doors yesterday, knocked on uh, Jim's door, invited him to church, and Jim showed up tonight. So Jim, uh, we're glad to have you. Let's give Jim a big hand. Amen. Good. Glad to have Jim with us tonight. And uh, uh, we hope to see him again, but um, uh, make sure you shake his hand, say hello, uh, introduce yourself or whatnot. But um, of course, we y'all remember Pastor Jackson used to push friendliness at our church. Go be friendly. Be friendly. Be friendly. Uh, and um, uh, that's what we want our church to be. Friendly church, kind church, courteous church, where people feel welcome. I don't want people to feel distanced. Man, I went into a church down in Houston, Texas, big well-known church uh, with a big well-known pastor. And uh, I went in and the only person that did or said anything was the guy that opened the door, had a smile and said, hello. Not one other person shook my hand. Not one other person came up and introduced themselves. Not one person. And this is like Mr. Big Shot Church. And nothing against Mr. Big Shot. Nothing against nationally known pastor and whatnot. But his church said, no, they didn't say boo to me. I did not feel welcome. I sat by myself. People kind of looked at me like, there's somebody different here. What do we do? Um, not a, not, an invita not a, a, a visitor card, not a bulletin, nothing. And I said to myself, no, our church will not be like this. We must be friendly, kind, courteous, and welcoming. And um, we need Mrs. White back because that's her thing. So, uh, but <laughs> Mrs. White, come back from Oregon, please. Uh, but um, she's always greeting people with a smile and very friendly. So um, we must be doing something, right? Because Angel's stuck around long enough. So uh, uh, glad to have you with us. And uh, I hope to see you again. Um, Pastor Jackson will be uh, speaking Wednesday. So... I'll leave that up if you want to come to church tonight. Uh, but uh, he'll be, I'll be uh, down in Texas on Wednesday, so please pray for my safety, and then I'll see you guys again on Saturday and Sunday.